certainly Rich has made the best of that opportunity. Breaking the rushing record at Bucknell in two years and one game. We're going to get going in the second half. Southern Connecticut down 17 to nothing is going to let Bucknell get the ball first because the Bison did not win the toss to open the game. So one of the benefits when you don't receive in the first half, if you can build a lead, you get the ball first in the second half. Well, I don't think that was their game plan or that, that wasn't their design. It worked out well for them right now. But you want, what you want to see is a carryover of intensity from the first half to the second. Sikowski will field the kick on the run at the 10, come across the 20 to the middle of the field to the 25, gets a block from Parham, comes the near side to the 30, and he'll be tackled by one of the special team players for Southern Connecticut, Scott Persing, a backup defensive back on the stop. And Bucknell will have decent field position out across their own 30 to begin things in the second half. Sikowski's a good return man. Uh, punt and kickoffs. He has a nice knack for setting the play up and setting the blockers up and then making a break and making one cut and doing the, what he can with it. Jim Fox, the quarterback, he opens having uh, completed uh, eight passes out of 14 for 94 yards, two touchdowns and two interceptions in the first half. He's got Bombich and Lemon in the backfield on first and 10 from the 32-yard line. Two wide receivers to the left side. Fox will go to the handoff, hand it to Lemon. Lemon will break out over the right side and spin for about two yards from the 32 to the 34. He picked up those two yards on second effort. Cornerback Dwight Clark on the stop for Southern Connecticut. I think one of the changes that we're going to see in Southern Connecticut's defensive scheme this second half is a lot more force from the corners. I saw a rotating secondary right there, which freed up the corner to take away the cutback that uh, Lemon was able to uh, make go so well in the first half. Second down and about seven and a half to go for a first down. Again, they line up in an eye. Sikowski to the left, Nopum to the right. Now Nopum in motion from right to left. Fox again on the handoff. Lemon trying to bounce outside to the left side. 35-40. Jukes to the outside. 45-50. He's over 100 yards on that play. I think he should be. He'll be out of bounds at the 45-yard line. First and 10 Bucknell in Owl territory. He runs with a nice lean, a lean that almost makes it look like he's running downhill every time he carries the ball. And he gets in the open field. It's daylight. It puts a lot of pressure on the secondary to be able to tackle him one-on-one. -on -one. Unofficially now, 20 carries for 106 yards. He now is rushed for 100 yards or more in 16 consecutive games. Again, 20, the 1AA record held by Frank Hawkins, who played for the Oakland Raiders in the early 80s. First and 10, Bucknell at the 45 of Southern Connecticut. Bombich in front of it. Looks like Moore now in the backfield. Moore, the backup tailback, will get the run. He'll get inside the 40, close to the 39. Five yards for the backup tailback as Moore comes in with fresh legs as they give Lemon the breather after the 21-yard run. Well, it is warm out there today. It's very, very humid. And but, uh, Rich Lemon has already carried enough uh, to have a full day's work in. He's done it in one half. So he's compressed, you know, the amount of work that most backs get in a full day in a lot of humidity. So he's in good shape. And, you know, they're just spelling him right now. Second down and five after Moore picks up five. Sikowski to the left. No boom to the right. Tight end Wilcox in the slot. He'll go in motion from left to right and then come back. Moore will carry on a counter. Left side has the first down inside the 35 to about the 32 or 33 yard line. Gain of about seven more for Milton Moore on the tackle for the Southern Connecticut Owls was linebacker Terry Burrow. But Bucknell on a very nice drive. They have run the ball on every down in this drive. They're inside the 35 of Southern Connecticut with a first down at the 33. Milton Moore is a nice compliment to Rich Lemon, and he runs uh, very similar. He's a cutback runner also, and he, he runs to daylight, and that's what he's done the last two carries here. Milton Moore was hurt quite a bit last year, had an ankle injury of most of 94, but really came on in spring ball when Lemon didn't play a whole lot and gained valuable experience. First and 10, Bucknell bobbled snap from center, and Fox able to fall on it. Bucknell will lose one and the down, so it'll be second down and 11 coming up. The exchange that time from center Scott Lennox to quarterback Jim Fox, just not quite there. Lennox is now at center with Donkers and Gay, the two senior returning starters on the left side of the line, and I believe it is Hodges and also Misiak that now make up the right side of the line for the Bison as they've shuffled a couple throughout the game. And that's exactly how the Bison line up in the front. Second and 11 coming up for Bucknell. Sikowski to the left, no boom to the right. Couple of tight ends, one is a wing back, one on the line. The lone back now is Moore. Moore gets the play fake. Fox will scramble to the left side. Fox will keep it on a bootleg. His first run of the day, and Fox is going to scramble for the better part of nine or ten yards. He'll be very close to another Bucknell first down. That time Fox was very decisive when he got to the corner, Brian. He knew he had the room and took it. Well, the advantage right there is that he's got a lot of open field in front of him. If the defense commits to him, he has the option to throw the ball, and that's what you really ideally want on a good bootleg is to put the pressure on the defense, make them commit. 
whatever. It's almost like the point guard in basketball. Make the defender commit to you, and then you make your decision based upon what he does. No Boom and Sikowski, both wide to the right, the wide side of the field. The lone back now is Lemon as he returns to the game. Lemon will get the handoff on the short side. He'll plow his way inside the 20, close to the 19. It was third and about a yard and a half. Lemon makes the first down for Bucknell, and the Bison will have a first down at about the 20-yard line, and they're leading 17 to nothing, 11.40 to go in the third quarter. Score here, Brian. Not that 17 to nothing is not a good lead, but 24 nothing. Uh, this game would be well in Bucknell's hand. I don't think that uh, Coach Gad would have any problems seeing a lot of uh, secondary guys get some playing time in the first game. First and ten. Ball at the 20-yard line. Backs in an offset eye. Twin set to the right side. Long count for Fox. Looking over that Southern Connecticut defense. Fox countering back to Lemon. Lemon will try to go to the short side. Nothing doing. Gain of maybe a yard. Gomez and Ferguson there on the tackle for the Owls. That play they've had a lot of success with today. It's nothing more than just a delayed lead draw. Fullback leading up and isolating on Ferguson. And the quarterback sort of hitching just a little bit, buying a little bit of time, setting the play up, letting the blocks and letting the blockers get set and then giving it to Lemon, let him pick in his hole. Lemon will come out as he lost a shoe, and he'll have to put his shoe on again. So Milton Moore back in the game. He and Bombich in the eye and back of Fox. Sikowski to the left, Nopum to the right, and a quick count. Moore will take the handoff, and Moore will get a couple. So Bucknell will look at the third and pretty long. Third and six in the first half, Bucknell did a very good job on uh, third down conversions. The Bison converted three out of five third downs in the first half. And have a third down and about seven to go right here, and they'll bring some extra receivers. Phillips and Perkins will come into the game. Most coaches would be happy with third down conversions approaching anywhere near 50%. Over 50%, that's a successful day. Last year, Bucknell was 34% on third down conversions. They converted 50 of 147, which is probably about a league average, I would think, 34, 35%. Third down and seven. Fox on a quick count sends everybody into the pattern. Back to pass. Throws it right side underneath, and it was nearly intercepted by Southern Connecticut at the 13. And getting up from that play was Tom Caporale. And if he had been able to keep his feet while intercepting, he could have had a touchdown. I think Tom Gadd's heart just skipped a few <laughs> beats on that right there. He was looking at an awful lot of field. Nobody would have touched him. It would have been seven points. The Owls would have been right back in this game. It's something that you don't want to let happen. Rich Miller will try another field goal. He's one for one on the day. This one will be a 34-yarder. Sikowski to hold Lennox to snap. It's coming from the left hash mark. Miller trying to give Bucknell a 20 to nothing lead. Nice snap, nice hold. Miller's kick is up, and the kick is no good. It missed wide to the right. And with 9.56 to go, Southern Connecticut will take over as Miller just did miss it. And the Owls will get the ball out to the 20-yard line where they'll start at first and 10. So Miller, one out of two last season on field goals. Miller was just three out of nine. Uh, the mechanics on that were very, very good. The snap, the hold were fine. I, he was just off from the beginning. The Owls will break the huddle with their first possession. Bucknell held it for just a tad over five minutes on their first drive. Southern Connecticut with Burns at quarterback. Rowe and Robinson line up in an I formation. Burns throws on first down, throws it quickly into the flat. Ortiz makes the catch at the 28. Gets wrestled out of bounds at about the 33. We'll call it a gain of 13. Little and Jackson push him out of bounds. I believe that's only the second catch of the day for Ortiz, who came in needing nine catches and 68 yards to become their all-time receiver. He now has two catches for 18 yards on the day. Well, that was a well-thrown timing pass from Burns to Ortiz, and I think Kavanaugh wants to get back in this game. He's going to try and do it in this series, and from the looks of the first play, they're going to get more aggressive about what they're trying to do. This could be a big swing if Southern Connecticut could take it down, a difference from 24 to nothing to 17-7 if the Owls could put something in the end zone. Burns hands off to Rowe. Rowe jumps into the center of the line. Pat Feely, the defensive lineman, the first to get to him. Ed Berman, also Michael Haggerty there to make the stop. Short gain, we'll call it a gain of two, second and eight, coming up for Southern Connecticut. Uh, Bucknell's been so dominating defensively in this game that we forget that we, what we talked about at the outset of this game, that Southern Connecticut does have a very experienced offense, and they should have you know, reason to expect that their offensive execution should be better than it's been today. So if they can put something together here, it may change a little bit about the way this game is uh, the outcome of it. Second down and eight for Southern Connecticut. Twin set to the right side. Movement, and I don't think we're going to have the play, and we won't. Somebody moved on the right side of the line for Southern Connecticut, so the clock will stop. 9-11 to go in the third quarter. If you're just joining us, it's Bucknell 17 and Southern Connecticut nothing. All the points in the first half. 
Fox with two touchdown passes, and Rich Miller has added a field goal. And Bucknell has uh, totally dominated the first half, a minus rushing yardage for Southern Connecticut in this game today, and they'll lose five more yards, and penalties have been a factor as well. Actually, they're going to say that it was a delay of game, but they didn't get the uh, play started more so than somebody moving. Either way, it results in a five-yard penalty, and Southern Connecticut will have a second down coming up and 13 to go for a first down. Yeah, Bucknell's been stifling, but by the same token, Southern Connecticut hasn't helped themselves with the number of miscues that they've had today. It just went from second and seven to third and 12, or second and 12, and it's just put themselves in a difficult predicament here. Duhame, the tight end now, flanked out to the right side. Plummer also there. Ortiz on the left side. The backs are in and I. Bucknell in a five-man front. Now some linebackers will come. Burns back to pass, throws it to Ortiz, and Ortiz will push Jackson this time, and it's incomplete. Ortiz, right before the half, was bumped by Parham this time. Ortiz was trying to get to the ball and bumped against Jackson. Either way, they're going to call it an uncatchable ball. And now Southern Connecticut will look at a third down and 13. And while we talked about Bucknell's third down conversions being good, three out of five, Southern Connecticut's have not been very good, one out of seven. And bad news for Southern Connecticut right there. Their backup offensive lineman, the one that was the most versatile and backed up all the position, Christian DeMond, just limped off the field. So Southern Connecticut was already claiming a lack of depth on the offensive line. It's really going to be tested at this moment. Third down and a long 12 to go for a first down. Bucknell now will only have four rushers. Back to pass is Burns. Burns throws the timing pattern left side to Robinson, and it's intercepted by Bucknell at the Southern Connecticut 47. The ball was floated up there, and Charles Crudup, the senior, comes up with the interception for Crudup. It is his third interception. He had one last year against Southern Connecticut, one in another game, and one here. Well, that's just an example of a real, really well-played zone defense. He came over from the safety position. The ball was floated too long. That window that that ball has to be placed in is very, very short, Bob, and it got closed quickly as Crudup made a nice run on the ball and was able to keep his feet in bounds in there. And got out of bounds, and Bucknell will have it first and 10 at the Southern Connecticut 47-yard line. Second possession of the half. Fox play fakes to Lemon, looking long downfield instead. Throws it out underneath of the tight end Stover on the near side, and he can't hang on at the 42. Incomplete. Good fake again by Fox, and I think it was intended to go deep. Well, I think he wanted to go deep. I tell you what's happening right now with Fox is that Lemon is having such a good game running the football right now that their play-action passes are really taking off all their passes right now off play-action. And it's freezing uh, the defense of Southern Connecticut. That was a nice job of Fox looking off to a safety valve right there. It should have been a completion. Second down and 10 from the Southern Connecticut 47. The linebackers up for the Owls. They show blitz. Phillips in motion from left to right. Fox back to pass. Flares it out. Left side to Lemon. Makes the catch at the 48. Gets inside the 45 to the 44. Good open field tackle that time by the Southern Connecticut defensive back Scott Persing wrapping up Lemon out in the flat. Not an, not an, uh, an easy task by anybody. But uh, it's something I thought that I would see more of today. It was a, a lot more flare or screen passes to Lemon because anytime he gets the ball in the open field, he's, he's very, very dangerous. Flag down at the spot that Persing made the tackle, and Bucknell is retreating. We'll see what the foul call against Bucknell will be. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Somebody must have said something, and that means the down will count, and they'll lose 15 yards. Bucknell has had only a couple of penalties today, and now from instead of having a third down and... Something fairly long but workable, it's going to be third down and a mile to go for a first down. I didn't see anything going, any kind of an altercation going on over there. Looked like Lemon got up and kind of slammed the ball to the ground. I don't think that was the penalty. I'd be curious to know just what they called. A couple of people in the booth, Heath and Frank, seem to think maybe they called that. But if you're, I mean, I know they have no taunting, no celebrating, but... Uh, if they're calling that, that seems they're pretty. Call. That seems pretty petty right there, Bob, if that's what they call. I would agree. Third down now and 23 to go for the Bison. The ball back on Bucknell's 40. Southern Connecticut will blitz. Fox looking downfield. Flag down. A hold probably against Bucknell. He's got Perkins out there at the 15. Fox threw it a long way. He had Perkins running out there, but overthrew him. And uh, we'll see if Southern Connecticut will take a fourth down and about... 38 to go for a first down, or whether they, excuse me, fourth down and punt it away, or give them third down again in about 38 or 40. I think I'd want the football back. It's going to be a holding call on Gay. Fox just aired that ball out 55 yards. Perkins certainly looks like he's a step faster than anybody on the field. Perkins ran track one year here at Bucknell, but with new coaches this past year, did not run track because he wanted to 
learn the new offense, etc. The penalty will be refused, and Southern Connecticut's going to take the football. Well, Perkins definitely has a set of track legs. And a piece of spaghetti coming out of those pants right there. They are not uh, bulked up in the weight room by any means, but the, the kid can flat out fly. I think he's probably the fastest receiver on this team. Fourth down and a mile. Lennox to snap, Miller to punt. Back in single safety, it is, I believe it is uh, Caporale, or no, it's Ortiz. And a punt off the side of the foot is going to be a very poor punt. Miller averaged last year a total of 40 yards a kick, and this one's going to be extremely short as the official keeps coming and coming. He'll stop at the 36-yard line, only 28 yards on the kick for Miller. Well, I just looked at Coach Gad down there, and he just gave him one of those looks like, I'm really Steven Seagal, don't come near me with a, <laughs> with a shank punt like that. So Southern Connecticut will get the football back on their own 34, so Bucknell does not do anything with the Charles uh, Crudup interception. 8-16 to go in the third quarter. Bucknell 17 and Southern Connecticut nothing. Coach Gad calling the entire offense over in a separate huddle. Looks like he's given a little piece of his mind right there. Not happy with the execution right now this half. First and 10 for Southern Connecticut at their own 34-yard line. Burns will hand off short side to Robinson. Robinson will get hit behind the line by Ed Berman. Maybe on forward progress he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. But Berman has shown a lot of agility and a lot of quickness in the backfield. They've had trouble with him all day. I think Ellis Robinson is wondering uh, if he's really a running back. Uh, he hasn't gained positive yards in the last couple of carries. And, and I don't know if he's ever been stifled this much by any defense in his career thus far. Last year against Bucknell, Robinson had a decent day, 17 carries for 78 yards, and right now he's at 12 carries for 17 yards, averaging 1.4 a carry. And that's not going to win you a lot of football games. Second down and a little more than 10 as Robinson didn't get back to the line. Burns throws it out in the flat to Robinson. Robinson catches it behind the line of scrimmage. A lot in blue will have a shot at him. Berman will finally come back from the backside to make the tackle. It'll be a gain of three. Third and seven coming up, but Robinson did a nice job. He probably shouldn't have seen the line of scrimmage on that play. You know, it's a it's a well-designed and conceived play. It's a delayed screen to the offside. They look strong. They come back weak, and they throw the screen pass, but Bucknell's speed and pursuit has been so outstanding today that they really can't get anything going on that particular play. Plummer will go wide to the right as the ball on the left hash mark. Ortiz to the short side. Backs are split. We have not seen uh, Southern Connecticut out of the shotgun at all today. Third down and seven. They need to get to the 44 for a first down. Burns throws it short of the first down. Traverso makes the catch, and I think with forward progress, they're going to give him the first down, but I think the official gave him that left foot instead of the right foot because I don't think he made it. I thought Miller and company had held him up. I don't think he ever got the foot down. Three people hit him simultaneously. I think it's a bad spot. I would have placed that ball a full yard behind where they placed it. And we've got a pretty good view. We're about almost We're, even with the 45. I'm right on the ball here. I'm right on the 45-yard line. And, and there's no way that he got that close to it. But it'll be a first down for Southern Connecticut. The Owls with just now five first downs in the entire game. And move the sticks. And I think that's the first first down of the second half. First and ten now for the Owls. Five-man front for Bucknell. Burns the quarterback, little counter to Robinson. Robinson may get a yard to the 45-yard line before that Bucknell defense is able to close it down again in a hurry. The, the advantage to this particular defense at 34 front is you're very flexible with what you're able to do. Right now, they've got three down linemen, and they're bringing Willie Hill, the outside linebacker, playing him like a Lawrence Taylor. He's really freed up right now on the open side of the ball. That time, he forced the play inside and was able to turn it over to the interior lineman. Second down and nine after the one-yard run. Backs in an offset eye with Rose shaded to the right side. Bucknell again in a five-man front. The two stand-up linebackers on the outside. Robinson will carry. Berman will be there again. And I think Robinson might see Berman tonight in his dreams because that big number 97 has been in his face most of the afternoon. Yeah, he's lived in the backfield. Uh, some coaches would call living it in the paint. Uh, he's definitely living in the paint today. He's uh, made a lot of plays behind the line of scrimmage. Two sacks so far today. And... Um, a lot of penetration on his part. Let's take advantage of yourself as an offensive lineman. What would you be doing right now to try to stop Berman? Well, I would run right at him. I, you know, right now he's, he's uh, taking a lot of angles and a lot of gaps, and I would uh, try to eat him up with uh, some scoop blocking uh, as a tandem in offensive line. Third and ten, Southern Connecticut trying to pass for the first down, and Burns had to throw it too soon. The pass intended for Joel Fernandez but he was on his backside as he was throwing it, and that incompletion has got to be charged to the rush that time of Bucknell. Well, the offensive tackles 
right now for Buck, uh, for Southern Connecticut are just giving up too much space to people like Berman, who has a lot of speed, and he's uh, forcing things from the outside right now, and they're getting good interior push, which isn't allowing the quarterback to go anywhere. Bianca Mano on the punt on fourth and ten, ten-man line. Sikowski standing at the Bucknell 20. As Bucknell looks to get the football back. Rush comes, but Bianca Mano gets it away. It's a high spiraling kick. Sikowski will go back and field it on the 15. Now reverses his field, comes back to the 20, still going to the 25. He'll get a return of about 9 or 10, 41 yards on the kick by Bianca Mano. Frank Thompson hands me an interesting statistic about Robinson. He's only had three carries today that have gone for more than two yards. I thought so. I thought most of his uh, most of his carries have been just negative, negative gains or no gains so far. And I don't know if he hasn't run to to an open field yet because it seems like somebody's hitting him as soon as he's uh, getting the ball. First and 10 now for Bucknell, just shy of their own 25-yard line. Neither team has scored here in the third quarter, but it's 17 to nothing, Bucknell. Bison with seven in the first, 10 more in the second, and have pitched the shutout thus far at the Owls. Fox on a quick pass, a little hitch pass to Sikowski, and I guess it's a pass and not a lateral. And at the 20-yard line, they'll call it incomplete. Bucknell fortunate that that was not ruled a sideways pass and a lateral, or Southern Connecticut might have had it. They'll regroup and go with second and 10. It's best as a defense to always play that ball like it's a live ball. Never give up on it. Don't rely on a whistle. Go after that ball. You never know how they're going to rule something. And you those. never know that you might be able to sell them if you go for it quickly. That Yeah, you thought it was a lateral. Maybe Absolutely. the official will give it to you. That's a play where you just want to play hard all the way through. Second and 10. Southern Connecticut kind of gave up and didn't go for it. Fox on a quick out to Sikowski. Makes the catch of the 35. Jukes a man to the 40. Gets out near midfield into Southern Connecticut territory. That time Southern Connecticut relaxed a little bit defensively. They thought Sikowski stepped out. And uh, John, whose nickname is Shaker, kind of shook them a little bit and moved it down the sideline for a big gainer on the play that time for the Bison, 26 yards from Fox to Sikowski. I'm not sure what Sikowski's speed is, but he's got a lot of moves. He's very shifty. He's a very good return man, as we pointed out. And right there, he's, he's really looking to do something with the ball after he catches it. First and 10, Bucknell just over the midfield stripe, 17 to nothing, Bison lead. They've got the back split, now some movement in the line, and it looked like for Southern Connecticut, Paul Willis, the defensive tackle, may have anticipated the stab count and moved, or maybe they'll hit Bucknell with the illegal procedure penalty. We'll see what the call will be. And it's going to be offsides. Willis did anticipate the snap count and guessed wrong. It's amazing how good offenses look when you can run the football. Everything else stems and is a compliment to that. Right now, all the problems that Southern Connecticut are finding themselves in as a result of Lemon running the football. Right now, the corners are really playing off. They're giving a lot of room to the wide receivers. First and five after the five-yard penalty. Nopum in motion from right to left. The backs are in an eye, and now Nopum cut up to the... Uh line of scrimmage too soon the play will continue and I believe Southern Connecticut will have the opportunity to accept the three yard loss because the play does not stop when a back moves it should be an illegal motion not an illegal procedure and uh, we'll see if that is the call it is an illegal shift and if I'm Southern Connecticut I take the three yard loss and burn the down right here I think that's what they may do here second and eight a uh, note boom was going forward uh, when he was in motion there at the very end before the snap, the ball was snapped, so two I, men were moving at once. I think he just kind of forgot the snap count a little bit, and, uh, well, Southern Connecticut's going to take the five-yard penalty and make it first and ten. I think I'd rather have second and eight. Well, I guess they 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 feel like uh, right now Bucknell is doing a good job in moving the ball. The farther they can get away from the stick of the first down, the better off they're going to be. 4.23 and counting to go in the third quarter. 17 to nothing in favor of Bucknell if you're just joining us. Backs in an offset eye. Lemon the deep back. First and ten from the midfield stripe. Fox on a delay. Give it to Lemon right side following a bombage block. 45. Jukes a man at the 40. Still on his feet and gets knocked down at the 36. Terry Burrow, the last man to get to him. And uh, Lemon, not very tall at 5'8". Very low center of gravity. Tough to knock him off those pins. And uh, he continues to churn up yardage. Lemon now with 23 carries for 125 yards. He does not go down easy. And Bucknell with a first and ten. Wouldn't have mattered, I guess, if it was second and eight or first and ten on that play. The point was moot. First and ten at the tw excuse me, at the 38 of Southern Connecticut. Bucknell marching again. They had a missed field goal early in the third quarter. They've been able to move the ball in this half against the Owls, but have yet to score. Lemon on the first uh, hit does not go down over the middle, but the second one will put him down. Gain of maybe a yard and a half or two at the most. Short gain. The man to get to him was Paul Willis, defensive tackle for Southern Connecticut. 
the, uh, the defensive interior linemen of Southern Connecticut have not made a lot of plays today. It's Most of the tackles have been by Ferguson, the linebacking crew, and some of the defensive backs. It's one of the few times they've been able to stop Lemon at the line of scrimmage. When your safeties are making a lot of running tackles, you're usually in trouble. And they're in trouble. Phillips and Sikowski wide to the left. The tight end Wilcox on the right. Backs in an